What we're on to this time is the, the Pro Comp 190cc cylinder head. This goes to a customer that has a 327 cubic inch motor. So obviously the 210s were a bit much as a starting point. There are some people that would say 190cc's is really pushing it for a 327 or a 302. So in a stage 4 or stage 5 setup, what we're looking at here is the least amount of material to be removed yet with the biggest flow gains. And this head, it's obvious where that problem is, which I'm going to show you. So there's three problems with this head. We're going to go in there and straighten it out. We're going to get a lot of CFM for this thing with uh, probably no more than a 10 to 15 cc removal. I would like to point out that I did CC the head before I started some months back. And what I ended up with was not 190, it was actually 186. But tonight when I got ready to do it, I CC, if y'all remember, these little orange dots, this was from the manifold head on the three-way test. Uh, it was this port right here that I CC'd tonight. And just to make sure, and I come up with 186.5. So right off the bat, the quality control leaves a little bit to be desired. So let's get in here and let me show you the mods I'm going to do as I do it. The worst problem and the worst design flaw of this head, which is relevant with all the pro comps, is what I have nicknamed <laughs> the Pillar of Power. Now, as you can see, she's straight right here. That wow, it hits this, it's a, like a pillar, a column from Rome. It just jumps out. Look at that. I'm saying probably almost a half an inch. This is where the head bolt hole is then comes all the way back around and circles into the bowl. This is the number one problem with the heads. You've got to straighten this out if you're even going to think about making any serious horsepower. But with this head being already 190 and we're wanting to keep it somewhere around 200, 205 in that range because of the 327 cubic inches, this is going to be our major deal right here and then of course the bowls and a little bit of movement on the side so anyway this is the area that we're going to focus on I mean you can just see look at that big bulge the light actually comes up to here and it blocks the reflection of the light being able to come up and hit this straight wall so I'm going to go in there and start gnawing on these things and chop on this and get this done this is going to be our first order of business with the head that where I've already began the slice, you got to be very careful going over the short turn radius. You want to catch it just a little bit above it and begin your slice right there. That just shows you how much, and we ain't even near breaking through to that wall. You don't want to slice till you break through. You want to make a chunk slice and then start gnawing down at it a little bit and then uh, go back in there and barely touch it again because you don't want a lot of the tube exposed just a little bit kind of like it's a marker again if you will it tells you your point that you you know stop at it'll have one here one there I'll go ahead and get the rest of the bottoms and then pull it up at top on this Pro Comp 190 and see if we can't make this head rock and roll okay. with the bottoms and the tops cut what we end up with um, is what I like to call the clover leaf. Y'all have seen my videos before. And these are my markers. Now notice I didn't bust through. I will bust, but I didn't want to bust through on the initial uh, cut right here and right here. Just look at that big chunk of aluminum. Remember that here comes this air because remember that from right here at this edge to the short turn radius to the seat is the shortest distance between two points. That's going to be your dominant airflow in the one, two, and three hundred lift ranges. Okay, here it comes hauling butt through here and then it hits this big wall and has to deflect. Remember, air does not like change. So by taking this whole section out, moving that wall over, we're letting that air come straight through 
and go down. Now this is going to be a chunk of cc's here, probably on this head, I would like to say, I don't know, maybe anywhere from 10 cc's to 12. Um, I've never just done that mod and done it. I would like to have done it, but I'm in a rush on this pair of heads. I don't have time to record a lot of information. I just have time to get the mods done that has to be done and Maybe that's what I should do anyway, but I like to, to try to put together a puzzle. But anyway, that's what's going on now. Now what I'm going to do is I'll take my large egg and I'm going to go in there and pull it down. I'll go in here and I'll pull that section down and get it close to level. And from that point on, I make a decision on whether I go in there and make the slice one more time to pull till it breaks or just keep going till it breaks and pull it in. But that is the mod right here that's going to make a tremendous amount of difference. I wanted you to see what she looked like in this particular form. Once again, this is the 190 Pro Comp. Alright. Okay, now we're to the part where we're going to remove the excess guide. Uh, it don't need to overhang that much. We're hunting for CFM that is blocking it, although it's got a nice little bobtail, the Pro Comp does, a wing if you will. All you really need with an 11 30 second guide is over two inches of valve guide, around two to two and a quarter. I measured it and this thing here is like two and a half or two and three quarters long. So what we do is I have a special cutter that fits on my drill. Um, this is a guide boss cutter and you can see there, there's the 11 30 seconds pilot. I'll go in here and I'm going to pull that down level with the aluminum and that's going to get some of that crap out of the way so we can get a little bit better airflow numbers on our higher lift flow. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this operation and trim it down. And as soon as it hits the aluminum, we're going to stop. I do move around and waller a little bit as I'm doing it. I know you see me doing that. Now I'll do this on the intake and the exhaust guides as well. Somebody had already started porting on the exhaust. Um, I wish they hadn't have done it, but I'm still going to be able to go in there on the exhaust. You can see kind of where they started bobtailing it. Um, I'll go in there and cut the guide, pull it down level with the aluminum and reform the shape. Uh, the guy's mind was in the right place, but he really needed to pull the guides down first, and then the bobtail, of course, is done a little bit different, but I admire him for trying. Anyway, let's... I'm just now starting to see it pick off a little bit. Alright, see our kiss off is just now starting to show a touch of aluminum. And that's it. That's all we want to do is get it where it kisses off. Let's get a straight shot. Okay, and there you can see it just barely touched the aluminum. Uh, that also gives me a, a marker to kind of round it a little bit. I won't be going as intrusive on this one as I do the two tens because once again with a 327 engine we just got to really watch it here. We're wanting the most airflow numbers with the least amount of material we can remove because 
we don't want this thing to be a pig coming right out of the hole and we're real close to that happening so anyway just wanted to show you how I kiss off on the guys we'll go over here and hit a um, one that he's worked on let's take a look at this you see where he tried to bobtail it and run it around it but a bunch of the guy is sticking up so let's go in there and see if we can fix this guy's little trick that he tried to do and see if we can make it better for him Yeah, that's a problem. See, it's starting to dig right there back in the aluminum part. Man, you got to watch it. So I might just kiss off on these a little bit. We're going to have to go with what the guy done because you start digging too much back in there. And um, once again, the china heads aren't known the best for going in there and putting us a lot of meat in areas that we want to. So I'll probably just kiss off on it a touch more and then let that go with what the guy's done. The other heads, all right, we'll go ahead with this procedure and then back, the, and I'll show you the raw material, what it looks like on the ports after I've cut out the, uh, the, the push rod, the, uh, excuse me, the head bolt hole. All right, here we go. Now look at the difference in there. Wow, that's almost just a straight shot to that valve seat. Ain't that a lot better than what it looked like before? Lord, yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. Notice how I use my pointer. Now we come straight, and I mean, it's almost in line right here with our divider. Just straight back, and it's just lightly starting to bust. Now that the raw material is removed, I'll go in there with a smaller egg and start pulling it in and blending it up and, and start to see it break away with aluminum where it breaks into the uh, bolt hole. Man, that, that is absolutely a great shot right there. So anyway, I'll show you as I blend and what it looks like when it busts through, okay? On in a little bit. Okay. Next step is to go in here. I scribed it to a 1205. The reason I went to a 1205 is because, once again, the 327. If we try to go 1206, it's going to cause us to go about 100 or so thousands high, a little bit wider, and that's going to cause a situation that's just going to create that that 327 would have to be revved up to 7500 to make it work. So the 1205 is going to give us plenty of cross-sectional area and width to do the job that we're wanting to do. So I just wanted to show you, I'll go in there and scribe the line, pull it back, and then once I go around the push rod bulge and pull it in, then I'll be ready to set for straightening out the straight wall and do my blending on that. All right, just wanted to give y'all a close-up shot at what I'm doing next. Okay, as you can see, let me back up a touch. I went in there, set my clover leaf on the edges, and this right here wasn't too awful bad. Uh, they got this pretty wide right here. You uh, really got to watch it. You can bust through this here real easy. Like I said, I'm not saying that when you port these pro comps, you have to walk on eggshells, but you have to walk on eggshells. <laughs> They're giving you some good meat, some good places. It's uh, They have, over the years, gotten better and better about putting meat, redesigning the casting and flaws. It's just you got to be careful and watch it when you're opening them up. But still, with all the little problems they have, they are hands down still the best value that you can get on the market. When you look at power, performance, all that, if you get the right CC volume and then bring it up through porting that it needs to be. So anyway, just wanted to show you I'm set. Now it's time to go in there and do some damage. All right. Okay, I'm going to give you guys out there um, a serious performance tip and Pro Comp 190-210 CC tip. I started not to do it, but what the hell, I've done went this far. I'm going to give you something here. There is another troubled area in this head, and it's not that you got to do a lot to it, but it's in the shape that involves around the push rod area of the head. 
without giving too much or telling you, it works like this. When you're going in there, this right here is a 9 16 egg, I do believe. You go around and what's happening is the blade won't let it get around to touching this. So there's a big hump as it goes around the corner. It's like an extended hump that's going about a half inch past the apex of the short turn. You can feel it on these things literally. And what I do is I go in there and I start and I come out like this. and you don't swing all the way around, I'm just gnawing at that hump. Now with the 9 16 egg, when I'm in there chewing, I make about four or five passes. Then what has to happen is you have to take your smaller egg that'll now allow you to come in there and pull that in. This is a treacherous hump, and without giving you the exact dimensions, I've told you more than you can believe because if you don't go in there and get that area out, what's happening is when the air and fuel comes in, it's trying to make that turn. It's like going off the edge of a cliff and then diving straight down. Air does not like change. So going in there, like I was showing you, with that egg about an inch and a half in and knocking that ledge down, right till it comes to the apex, you don't do much grinding. Then <coughs> you can come in there with this later and pull it in. That's probably about 10 to 12 CFM right there in that one pop. And it's not a big material removal. I'd say probably maybe three to four cc's max, but it makes all the difference in the world and the airflow coming in and making a smooth transition on the dog leg and pulling it on the turn. I just thought I'd show you that one little tip. Like I said, four or five passes deep in there. You don't quite come to the apex back and forth a few times with your raw material, and it just does a ton of wonders to these heads, and there should be meat, but like I said, be careful because you're right there where the push rod is, and man, if you get into that, it will bust so easy, then you'll be epoxying and and blend in for the push rod and all that it gets into a big bucket of crap so anyway just wanted to pass that tip on to you diy guys